Germany, April 14th, 1561. At dawn, the citizens of Nuremberg awoke to what was described in a local news flyer as a very frightful spectacle. Various strange objects were spotted in the sky, engaged in what appeared to be an aerial battle. Could they have been witnessing a close encounter? They see this incredible sight as the sun is coming up. They see what they describe as cigar-shaped objects, circles in the air, and crosses, flying crosses. And suddenly, these shapes begin emitting other shapes. The spheres and disks were seen for a long time as they apparently were fighting in some kind of a battle over the city. In fact, the battle was so evident that the people in Nuremberg were actually able to perceive which side was winning. Some of the objects were seen to crash into the ground and disappear in a cloud of smoke or steam. Other objects were seen to fly off and disappear in the direction of the sun. This entire event becomes memorialized in a broadsheet. Now, a broadsheet in the 16th century was literally a newspaper. And that broadsheet exists today in Zurich, Switzerland. Debate presidential candidate Dennis Kucinich said he'd seen one, so has Jimmy Carter. So did a pilot who traveled from Iran to Washington so he could speak out today about his encounter with the UFO. Now, unidentified flying object means just that, unidentified. It says nothing about what or from where. But for years now, polling has shown that a majority of Americans believe the government, our government, simply isn't telling all it knows about those lights in the sky, whatever they are. Well, tonight, CNN's Gary Tuckman investigates. If you flew on Air France from Nice to London on January 28, 1994, your captain says he saw a UFO 1,000 feet long just outside your window. It seemed to be a huge flying disc. The now retired pilot is one of 14 men, mainly former government and military officials from seven different countries, talking about their UFO experiences. It disappeared in about 10 to 20 seconds. Here's a picture of Mars. By the way, this is not a professional tape. Uh, as you can see, these pictures are in a picture album, and I just got my camcorder out, and Wendell and I are flipping through the pictures. So this is not a produced tape for you to look at, so it'll probably never be on the market, but at least you get a chance to see some of these pictures. This is Mars just from a different direction with the sun uh, very bright on it. Now, uh, here is Mars, but here's one of these satellites. It's in orbit around Mars, made on Earth, unannounced, and is in orbit. This is the spring of 1976, and this device is in orbit around Mars. I don't know exactly who made it or who put it up there. Here's another one. This is Mars again, and here's uh, the light panels, solar panels, and uh, the satellite equipment in orbit around Mars again. This is a different one. This is a dust storm on Mars. Billy wanted to get close and try to take pictures of artifacts. You've all heard about some of the, uh, uh, the cytonoplasm on Mars, about the face on Mars that Richard Holden and other people have been looking into. Um, Billy published a paper back in the 70s talking about that. There was a race of people lived on Mars. Uh, they had a terrible catastrophe about 186,000 years back. At the time, there was about 40 million people killed on Mars. 
and uh, they're all gone now, of course. Um, so there were uh, societies there, and we will find quite a few remains of their civilization once we get up there. Here he's on board one of their large motherships. This is the side or the edge of a saucer that was parked inside as he was walking by it. Here's Jupiter. Here's the mothership in orbit. They're flying into it to go aboard. It was 17 miles high and about 10 miles in diameter. He spent three days on it. Uh, they went to different places in our galaxy to show him around. This was the craft that was right in front of him as they were flying into it. He took a picture of that one. Here again is back at Mars. These aren't in any particular order. Here's another object in orbit around Mars. And look, here's an American flag on it. So there's a couple of things that they put up there that the military's put up that we don't know about. This is a picture of Billy in a suit. He's on a prehistoric planet to see the dinosaurs. He's got a breathing apparatus on. This is a Pleiadian man, and they've stepped outside of the ship so he can see the animal life on this prehistoric world. Got his picture taken, too. That's pretty good. This jumps back here to, remember the Apollo Soyuz hookup, us and the Russians back in 76? Uh, Billy asked him if he could go up and watch it. They said, okay. Uh, they took him up. There's several pictures here of Apollo Soyuz hooking up with Earth in the background. Some of the wildest pictures he's got. I mean, just look at the vantage point, the planets in the background. How else would you get this picture unless you were up there at that particular vantage point? Not a lot of people have that in their photo album, you know. That.
them all the indications are the aliens eliminated microbial and viral life from their own ecosystem long ago. odd years, longer, I've been tracking UFO sightings, corresponding with people who are equally interested. I belong to a couple of the national UFO groups, as well as, for a long time, a local group in Quebec, before Quebec, and that's where my, if you like, professional background training came in this field. Is I think that some of what people report as UFOs are extraterrestrial spaceships. I think some of those ET spaceships have ET crews. Others are like our reconnaissance drones. And finally, I think some of those ET crews interact with people. They do what is commonly called abduct them, test them, and put them back again. And the people have missing time, so-called, and go on about their business not being totally certain what's happened to them. So all of those things I do think are true. very much like that. Physical reality suddenly seems like a dream you're waking up from and this is who you really are. Do we retain our consciousness? You do. Because everything is consciousness. Do we retain our memories? You do. And actually you have more access to more of them. Do we reappear in another physical form? And you can, other... but it's not a reappearance. Remember, all things exist simultaneously. There is no such thing exactly, literally, as reincarnation. It is multiple simultaneous incarnations all existing at the same time. So you are always you. You never become another version. Another version, another life is them. But you both coexist and are connected to the same, what might euphemistically be called, oversoul. Each of those lives is a simultaneously coexisting extension of the same oversoul. You are one extension, another life is another extension, and both lives exist as discrete and distinct persons coexisting at the same time with their own experience of themselves as the you that you are talking about.
slightly overwhelmingly negative collective energy to a slightly overwhelmingly positive collective energy, you can work toward, build toward that moment, that crossing, by aligning with yourselves more fully so that when the tipping of the scales occurs, and for the first time in a long time, the collective energy of your world is finally slightly positive. You can then ride with that accelerating, snowballing energy that will continue to accelerate forward and expand forward from that point forward in time. Then from 2015 on, as the individual contacts accelerate, then after your year of 2025 to 2033 will be the most likely window as we read the energy now for true global open contact to occur somewhere within that framework of time. Brand new information today raising new questions about possible contacts with UFOs. A top secret document filed by the FBI in 1949 tells how three different men each reported seeing a UFO breaking up in midair. The document reveals that they were miles apart at the time, and each one of them say they saw the UFO explode over the mountains in Utah. From Australia to Norway, Japan to the U.S., thousands of people have reported seeing unidentified flying objects. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, and produced pictures they're convinced can prove it. 
Several hundred of the believers assembled a few blocks from the White House to present their findings, including a former Canadian defense minister. I say without equivocation, we are not alone in the cosmos. We have neighbors. We should try to get to understand them. And phoning in his testimony, one of the American astronauts who landed on the moon. There's a number of us that have had these types of experiences to say, yes, we're not alone. We have been visited. Though their employers have allegedly told them to keep quiet, the event's organizer says airline pilots have reported more than 3,500 sightings. Including silver discs maneuvering off the cockpit, off the wingtips, maneuvering around the airplane, seen by the pilot, the co-pilot, and passengers of the plane. Uh, and then traveling off at thousands of miles an hour. That's a lot of evidence right there. The U.S. Congress last held a hearing on UFOs almost half a century ago, so organizers of this gathering paid a few retired congressmen to participate in the mock hearing.